Now let's talk more about the details we should see in a PNID. We shall start by talking about the equipment data. So while talking about the data to be shown for equipment in the PNID, we should show the equipment arrangement. In the PFD, showing only one piece of equipment and including all tagging is common. For example, if this is a pump having a spare, the PFD shall show one pump with the tags A and B. In the PNID, the case is different. We should show the detailed arrangement, which means how many pieces of equipment we are having. Are they connected in series or in parallel? Do we have spares? Or do we have a combination of both series and parallel arrangements? For example, in the shell and tube exchangers, and based on the thermal calculation output, we may need the arrangement to be more than one shell in series or in parallel or a combination of both, depending on whether meeting the required area to achieve the heat transfer. In this case, we may need more than one shell in series or not to exceed the pressure drop in the exchanger. We shall choose parallel arrangement here. This may also be the case with pumps based on pump selection and the required head or the pump NPSH. And based on operation needs, we may need a spare piece of equipment in order to operate the spare equipment while the other is in maintenance. This is highly common with pumps as they are more susceptible to getting out of service. Now let's talk more about the data shown on each piece of equipment in the PNID. Any PNID shows the main design parameters of the equipment in question. The design parameters are either related to the design pressure and temperature or to the dimensions and performance parameters. The parameters here to be shown in the PNID differ depending on the company or project standard. However, there are common parameters to be shown such as the design conditions for equipment in case of static equipment or in other words, the design pressure and design temperature. Design conditions are different than the operating conditions. If a vessel is expected to operate at 10 bar, then its operating pressure is 10 bar. However, if something went wrong in the operation and the pressure was raised, then there is a pressure on which the vessel is mechanically designed to withstand. Let's say it's 15 bar for example. So the vessel design pressure is 15 bar gauge and under any upset conditions, the pressure in the vessel shouldn't exceed 15 bar gauge. Otherwise, the vessel is susceptible to failure. So the PNID shows the design conditions unlike the PFD, which shows the operating pressure and temperature of a piece of equipment. However, in some companies, operating conditions are shown on the PNID. The PNID may also show the equipment dimensions or other equipment rated specifications. So, in the case of vessels or towers, it shows the diameter and the 10 to 10 length. For a tower, it may also have more than one section. So, the PNID shall show the design conditions and the dimensions for all tower sections. Also, minimum vessel tower elevations are needed to be added on the PNIDs as they usually affect the pump NPSH and the liability of sizing the pressure safety valves for fire scenarios if the elevation is less than 25 feet. And there are other criteria that the vessel elevation is an important factor. So it's commonly shown on the P and ID. For heat exchangers, usually the duty is shown on the P and IDs. Some companies may also show the main exchanger dimensions such as shell diameter and tube length. For pumps and compressors, the rated volumetric rate and differential head and the rated power are shown. Sometimes the design pressure is shown which represents the shutoff pressure or the maximum pressure the pump shall give during operation so that it shall be considered by the discharge system. But this is not always shown. The most important are the volumetric flow rate, the, the differential head and the power. It may also happen that the material of construction of the equipment is also shown. However, this depends on the standard of the company anyway. 
Finally, for all equipment, all nozzles and manholes are expected to be shown. In addition to the main nozzles for inlet and outlet fluids, we should also show other nozzles for instruments or for utility connections such as nozzles for steam or nitrogen purging that are carried out during maintenance to get rid of hydrocarbon vapor and allow the operator to go inside the vessel. We have seen an example in a previous video showing how the nozzles are shown on the P and IDs. So we can show some examples of tables for various equipment. For vessels, for example, we can see a table showing the design conditions, main dimensions and material. The elevation of the vessel can also be shown, but in the drawing itself, not in the top table. For exchangers, we can also see the design pressure and temperature and the specified material of construction for both shell side and the tube side. The table also adds the exchanger duty as main design parameter. Some companies may add shell diameter and tube length as well. When we add the table of a pump, we don't need to add dimensions, but we rather need to add the main specifications for the pump, which are flow rate, differential pressure, and power. Again, the data in the table depends on the standard followed when preparing E and ID. That's why we can see different data added on different P and IDs depending on the company or project requirements. Something here we should also consider is the equipment tag number. As we can see, each piece of equipment has its own tag number that identifies it from other equipment. So for the vessel, it has a tag number of 20B01. For the exchanger, it's 20E01. For the pump, it's 20P01. So here, the 20 designates the unit number. Then the letter reflects the equipment type. And then we can write the equipment serial number, which is 01 here, meaning that they represent the first vessel or exchanger or pump. The second one may be tagged as 20P02 or 20E02 or 20V02. So this is an example of how equipment tagging may work. The tagging philosophy is also subject to changes depending on the company or the project philosophy. It is generally conveyed from the PFD. So at this point, the P and ID is just following the PFD.